what it was like to be at those gigs. Yeah, let's come in. When you get your armpits moving, I want you to move them right up here. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Royal Antler at Narrabeen, um, a very popular, iconic venue of the 70s and 80s where a lot of bands in Australia started out and um, yeah just kind of gained momentum and attracted a lot of crowds a lot of um, people that just kept coming back for more so now I'm on my way to the um, Royal Antler at Narrabeen it's on Pitwater Road and I uh, just wanted to see what it looks like and um, yeah just see what's sort of uh, standing there now I believe the old um, Royal Antler has been knocked down. It's right across the road from this beautiful beach, so I'm driving through Longreef now. Here's Narrabeen Beach. I haven't been here in so many years. Just on my way to find the Royal Antler, uh, which I believe is now called The Sands. Here's a public bar at the um, old Royal Antler. So you can see there's uh, accommodation upstairs. Yeah, apparently where the bands played was next door over here. So you've got the main sort of area of the um, sands, which is what it's called now, over there. Public bars just in there. And um, yeah, where the bands played was next door. So it was knocked down. It was huge apparently. about the Royal Antler at Narrabeen. It was actually opened in 1886 as the Narrabeen Inn and then two years later they changed it to the Narrabeen Hotel and then in December 1963 it became the Royal Antler. Now the Bayfield family who I talked about in my previous video of the DY Hotel, they actually took over the lease in 1985 they renovated it in 1987 and they sold it in 1990 so there were redevelopments that happened and the new Narrabeen Sands Hotel, Hotel opened soon after that. I think it was 2007 or 9 or something like that. And um, it was actually built just next door to where the antler originally stood. There was a, a guy called Jeff I think who booked the bands there. Um, and of course uh, Bob Yates who I'll talk about soon now there was a electronic roof there was an electronic roof that kind of had to open up because back then there was no air conditioning and when you got crowds like you know 3,000 people attending you kind of needed that roof to be opened up yeah there are a lot of memories from musicians as well who talked about the Royal Antler uh, for example, uh, there was a guy called Philip Morris who was asked by Midnight Oil manager Gary Morris to uh, get a good live shot for the, um, the new album, uh, Head Injuries. And so apparently, um, yeah, what happened was he was front of stage and there was a roadie called Doug, Dougie Dorrington who lifted him on his shoulder and headed centre stage as Peter Garrett spotted him, turned with his hands out, screaming... Um, the words to the song, No Reaction. Perth 
Kirk Pengelly from In Excess has memories of the Royal Antler at Narrabeen where he said that um, he remembered playing support for bands like Midnight Oil and that Sydney audiences were really tough and if they didn't like you they'd let you know. As well they kind of prepared a lot of the bands for when they went overseas and it was like they were a well-oiled machine and they were you know they really did the hard yards and and played so often and so well that um, yeah they were ready to take on the world. Damien uh, Lovelock from the Celebrate Rifles he mentioned that um, sometimes there was a a mixture of you know youthful aggression and violence which wasn't always great with the alcohol. Uh, Paul Christie from Mondo Rock said that it was often very hot and not designed to hold that many people. Um, Paul Christie also played with the Party Boys um, when Shirley from Skyhooks was on vocals. What a great band the Party Boys were. Angry Anderson has memories of the Antler where he remembered a very young and naive Peter Garrett with hair and board shorts. A lot of people recalled the um, lack of restrictions, a sweat box that was the antler and uh, a complete fire hazard as well. So I guess it was a unique sort of training for a lot of bands. So yeah, I'm sure there's lots and lots of stories that I don't know about. If you have any, just put your comments in the, um, you know, sort of in the comment box. Uh, apparently there was a surf boat in the public bar. Joe Walsh from the Eagles, when he came to Australia back then, he apparently stayed at the um, motel there and often or a couple of times maybe might have played in the, um, in the pub from what I've been told. So apparently in 2014, Rob Hurst, drummer of Midnight Oil, pulled out from his attic posters that were dating back to when the band were actually called Farm, walked into the Manly Art Gallery and he just asked them about an exhibition and they agreed. So yeah, they kind of um, put up things like the Exxon banner, there was footage of um, the band backstage, there was the stage gear, costumes, um, and yeah, the documentary was by a guy called Rob Hambling, and it was just about the making of 10 to 1, and it kind of, uh, they had this room that recreated what it was like to be at the Royal Antler. Uh, things like the sticky carpet, the stale beer, you know, smell live footage um so yeah i'll try to find some of that and put it on here for you someone else that i wanted to talk about was bob yates bob yates is um and was a promoter author he was actually um the manager of my sex for a while and he actually gave my sex their first gig in australia in 1978 they were opening for, for john saint uh, jeff saint john um at narrabeen at the royal antler uh, he was actually the house promoter there. So the story is that one night when Bob Yates was at um, up the pub there, Tim Farris from In Excess came over and he actually um, told him that they were playing at the piano bar downstairs and they were looking for management and they were really impressed with what Bob was doing with My Sex. They asked him his thoughts. Apparently Bob Yates said that he was too busy and yeah, he was running My Sex, the Civic, the Rex, the Antler, and apparently he didn't see any potential in In Excess. So yeah, I'm sure he's come to regret that. Bob Yates also recalls when the Stranglers actually played at the Royal Antler at Narrabeen, and apparently they walked off halfway due to the unbearable heat on stage. Also, what happened, Harry Della, I wanted to mention Harry Della because I forgot to include him in my DY, no, sorry, my Manly Vale vlog. Harry Della was a huge um, yeah, personality and character from the days. Sort of stayed in the background but very instrumental, very important to a lot of bands and so yeah, big um, mention to Harry Della. So I hope you've enjoyed um, yeah, the trip down memory lane. I've never been to the Royal Antler and I haven't really been to a lot of the Northern Beaches venues because I, I did sort of grow up in a different town um, but I'm a huge live music fan and I really hope that a lot of these videos will bring back some fantastic memories for you if you do have any comments um, that you'd like to you know put down yeah feel free it's been uh, it's been fabulous sort of going through um, the history of a lot of these you know venues and I'm sure there's a lot more that I haven't touched on there's probably so many stories that are out there I just haven't really known people that have gone there yeah I'm on holidays at the moment so 
I haven't, um, yeah, I haven't been able to sort of do much except relax um, and enjoy this wonderful, you know, Western Australian environment here. It's fantastic. This is Denmark. I absolutely love WA. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Tune in for some more because I do have other venues that I will be uh, vlogging about in the future. Cheers. Here is a list of all the bands that have played at the Royal uh, Antler at Narrabeen. Skyhawks, Cold Chisel, Midnight Oil, In Excess, Ice House, Mental As Anything, The Angels, Matt Finish, Lonely Hearts, Gold Rush, uh, Moving Pictures, Rose Tattoo, Swanee, Kevin Borridge, Billy Thorpe, Dragon, The Ted Mulry Gang, The Reels, The Johnnies, Spy vs Spy and many many more. So that's uh, just a really quick list of some of the bands that have played there.